Okay, class, it's Professor Streeter, and I'm going to take you through a brief explanation of the midterm exam by narrating a little PowerPoint production I, I made. So let's get started. First things first, the due date is Wednesday, April 1st, and the midterm has to be submitted to the D2L assignment folder by 12 p.m. So uh, I'm distributing it giving it to you on Monday, March 23rd. You have until Wednesday, April 1st to complete it. There are two parts to the exam. Part A is short answer questions, and that is 10 points. So each question you write in part A is worth one point uh, because I'm asking you to choose 10 questions out of 20 and write a complete paragraph response for each. Um, Make sure you provide textual evidence for what you say. You can either give a direct quote or an indirect quote, but reference the text with a page number. Um, there are five sections in Part A, and you must answer questions from three of them, which means you can only skip two sections. Okay, so let's go to the first section, section A1. And these are questions from Sider's Chapter 1, Personal Identity in Riddles of Existence. I'll just read the first question. Is the concept of numerical sameness of person important? Why suppose that it is? Why does Parfit think it's not important? Parfit is a philosopher that Sider refers to in the chapter. Uh, and explain. So here you're being asked to explain your answer to the question in a brief paragraph. Again, you don't need to quote a lot, maybe one quotation, one indirect paraphrase, or just a page reference, so I can see that you are in a specific place in the text, so I see where you are in the text. Then there are three other questions in this section. Again, you don't have to answer them all, and you can skip all of these questions. You can only skip two sections, but this is one of the sections you could skip. Let's move on to section two. These are questions, three questions, from um, chapter 7, Constitution, by Sider, also in Riddles of Existence. Question 5, is it plausible to reject the assumption of creation? Why or why not? What implications does your answer have for the nature of material objects? Or you could answer the question with reference to the assumption of existence, one or the other. Those are two assumptions made in the antinomy. Okay, is it plausible to reject one of them? Why or why not? And what implications does your answer have for the nature of material objects? Uh, and then there are two other questions in this section. Section three, uh, I have four questions on chapter eight, Universals by Connie in Riddles of Existence. The first question, what is a universal? What are some basic reasons for believing that universals exist? And if you notice in question nine, I actually give you a quote from Connie. Connie writes, let's investigate the hypothesis that being red is a universal that is shared by the three red delicious apples. How does the universal relate to the apples? For one thing, where is it? There seem to be only two live possibilities for its location, and neither of them is attractive. That's a quote from page 162. And so the question is, how does this question pose a problem for the universalist? What are the two possible answers, and why aren't they attractive? Uh, again, this is the third section in Part A. You could conceivably skip all of these questions, or answer one or two of them, or all four of them. Um, let's move on to Section A4. Here we have five questions from the chapter on the Metaphysics of Ethics by Connie. The first also has a direct quotation. Connie writes, in, in, in question 12, we should re-examine the reasoning that gives rise to non-naturalism, namely the open question argument. At a crucial juncture, the reasoning makes a dubious inference, end quote. That's from page 214. And so my question is, what is the open question argument against naturalism in ethics? How does it give rise to non-naturalism? What is the questionable step or dubious inference that the open question argument makes in its reasoning? Okay, and then there are four others in this section. Let's move on to the fifth and final section. And these are all questions taken from the Plato, Aristotle, and Russell readings uh, in the reality book. So the first refers to Plato's Republic and the cave allegory in Plato's Republic. So that's page 37 to 39. 
To what does Socrates compare the image of the cave in the excerpt from Plato's Republic? How are we like the prisoners in the cave? What does the journey out of the cave signify? What is the last thing to be seen on the journey, and what does this correspond to in Plato's Metaphysics? Explain the allegory in your own words as best you can. Uh, and then the next question is one about Aristotle. What are the distinguishing marks of substance according to Aristotle? Explain the categorical difference between substance, quality, and quantity in your own words. Assuming, as Aristotle does, that all sensible substances are changeable, what are the four kinds of change that Aristotle identifies? Explain the different kinds of change in your own words. Okay, so that's uh, the first two questions in section five. The other two are, about, are from Russell. Russell writes, in daily life, we assume as certain many things which, on a closer scrutiny, are found to be so full of apparent contradictions that only a great amount of thought enables us to know what it is that we really may believe. That's a quote from page 137. How does the example of the perception of the table illustrate this point? What compels us, quote, to deny that in itself the table has any one color? Does this give us reason to question whether there is a real table at all? Okay, and so then finally question 20 is uh, related also to Russell on the, the question of the, the table. What is the, the real table? Um, all right, so you choose 10 of those 20. You can only skip two sections, though. So you have to write answers to questions from at least three of the five sections. Part B, essay topics. So after you've completed Part A, you have a short essay to write. And this is worth the same amount as Part A. So both parts are worth 10 points. Write a short essay. I've given you the word count. That comes to about one to two pages, double-spaced. A short essay in response to one of the following prompts. Your essay should contain an introduction, body paragraphs, and a conclusion. It should also contain page references for indirect or direct quotations. Okay? Uh, so here I've given you really just one extra question. It's about the Mills essay. What are you really? The metaphysics of race. He raises the following question on page five. To what extent and in what ways is race real and how deep is this reality? So my question is, how does Mills answer this question, and what are the wider implications or conclusions that he draws from his argument about the metaphysics of race, or the possible criteria for determining racial identity? That's a quote from page 50. Why does racial identity matter, according to Mills? Develop a short essay response to these questions in the context of Mills' argument. That is the first essay question topic you can write a short essay about. If you don't want to write about Mills, then you can go back to Part A and choose any of the questions from Part A that you skipped and develop a short essay length response to one of those questions. Okay, I hope that uh, makes sense. That's my brief explanation. Um, again, going back to uh, the earlier slide, it is due on April 1st and you have to submit your file as either a PDF or a docx file to the assignment folder in D2L. So you go into assignment folder and you find um, the midterm folder and just upload your midterm to that folder by noon on April 1st. If you have any questions, send me an email. Okay, thank you. Bye.